progress. Welcome back, everyone, to the weekly OF call. Um, as usual, we start with a client updates, but I don't really see any other clients apart from EVM1 slash Epsilon. Um, but we do have someone new on the call, Chris. I'm not sure if Chris, this is a person or a recording AI. Um, but if a person, then, uh, yeah, do you want to introduce yourself? All right, maybe it was an AI. Uh, all right, then. Um, yeah, just for the recording, let's do a client update from EVM1. Uh, who wants to volunteer? I can give an update. Uh, we have merged the Xcode logic for legacy targeting EOF and also one piece of creation logic, which is uh, uh, disallowing EOF creation from, from legacy um, and uh, other, yeah, create opcodes, EOF create and TX create are still on review and we are working on that. Um, and exchange implementation is in progress, yep. I think. Yeah, it just started. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Awesome. The other um, 663 instructions, those were implemented, just exchange wasn't? Correct. Swap and Dupin are, are already merged in. Sounds good. Uh, all right, let's move on to spec updates. Maybe Peter, you wanna uh, lead sure. that? Yeah. Um, so we have uh, we have merged uh, the update uh, the six six three update, which is the exchange of code, and also um, a slight uh, refreshing of thirty six seventy, just a language update mainly. And um, 3540 and 7069, so the basic uh, EAP and uh, uh, calls 2.0 EAP are still in review. And also in review, just uh, fresh, um, there's the 4200 one, which is uh, static relative jumps and 4750 which is uh, functions. Um, the first one is in review, but it's just moving into the review status. And the second one has some uh, has some changes to align to the mega spec, which I tried to get right, but uh, reviews are uh, encouraged and very, very welcome on this one so that uh, we can have a, the EAP in good shape. And I think that's it. All right, should we, I mean, just since all of us are here, sh should we use the time to maybe go through any of the checklists, what needs to be done in order to merge the EIP updates, or is there anything else pressing um, we should discuss right now? You mean the ones that, that are waiting uh, for a while, the, the 3540 and 7069 ones? Yeah, first the outstanding ones, and then if uh, anything which hasn't been written up yet, we can also discuss that. Uh, I think uh, that is that is the end of the list. So these four, if I'm correct, are still uh, not updated. I, I don't think I have any specific points to discuss in those. We just need someone to, to review and approve, I guess. Um, or was there anything specific that we wanted to discuss last time? Hold on. Yeah, I think for two of them I did review, but since it wasn't draft, I didn't. Um, I didn't approve to avoid merging, and I think we are looking for like a second review. I'm not sure if those took place. Okay, maybe just when when you re if you review, just make a comment. 
and, and just uh, nominate someone else to review or um... sounds good okay thanks yeah I think the, this call uh, uh, became, became kind of empty because both um, Charles and Dano are uh, traveling um, all right. Is there anything else we should discuss from anyone? We were discussing the launching the DevNet uh, at one point, and uh, Dano updated the basis status in the implementation matrix. And it seems only creation is missing on his end. He mentioned that not maybe not all the reference tests pass or are complete, but uh, in terms of the implementation itself. Uh, it seems that he the base is almost ready uh, to be up to spec uh, up to meg up to the mega spec. I don't know where that puts us puts us on the on the path to the devnet. Mm, what can we help with uh, for Deno um, to achieve that? Are there any of the test cases we still have to push? Um, I mean, to to create them or yeah, actually on the testing, how are we getting on getting the test PRs merged on the test repo? Are they getting merged or are we working off branches? No, I think they are getting merged. Pretty fine, but our PRs were mostly fixing existing tests for new logic in the new spec. So we haven't been adding much new tests lately, I would say. Yes, same on my end. I was mostly working on having the old tests uh, plus with the new with the new spec. Also, since I'm, I'm still a bit um, new and confused in terms of the test department, I'm not sure. I wish I could, I could go through the tests and and try to have a feeling, which are still missing. But I I don't have this right at this point. Maybe someone else can, um, can give an indication of what would be, uh, you know, what would be a good investment in 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 making those tests more more complete. Yeah, I was I was uh, also wondering about um, yeah the new tests for example for uh, this new kind of creation um, uh, for UF create and DX create. Uh, I was wondering if uh, we are going to continue uh, creating state tests for this, or this will be generated by EVM one mm -hmm. itself, or yeah, what is the approach we want to follow here? Yes, so this is not clear to me either. So you know, separately from these normal tests, we have now many state tests and validation tests that are generated from EVM1 unit tests, and they have pretty good coverage. They cover many things. Uh, um, but how are we going to merge them and whether we will merge them upstream, that's not quite clear right? because they don't have sources that's uh may be seen as a problem or i don't know um, there are like json tests generated directly from <clears throat> from c++ code and evm1 um, so yeah they cover create create uh, you have create and tx create pretty well um so also i'm not sure whether we should like write regular tests from scratch maybe not do i recall collect correctly that the testing team was uh 
supportive of having quote unquote EVM one tests uh, pulled into the testing suite. I remember something like that, but not sure what that means exactly. Uh, whether we merge them into test strip or not, or in what way. Like the easiest path forward would be maybe to generate the sources, which shouldn't be difficult. But then we will generate the sources and then these tests look like regular ones and maybe then it's possible to merge them. But we haven't worked on that yet. Because right now our generation is to JSON. Yes. Maybe as a first step, it would be just JSON, and then we can um, kind of work backwards and make them yum yumlify them. Um, so it doesn't need to go backwards. It's just different things to export to make a source file, and it shouldn't be even a YAML. It can be JSON too. Um, oh. It kind of depends who are the who are other teams who wants to use it, um, because we can easily generate JSON test and just make an make an zip file with the tests and and publish somewhere, and this is more or less how this execution spec tests uh, are done. So we mostly Download the just big pack of JSON files, and then you can execute that. Um, so that's I think relatively easy to do, but they won't be on this Ethereum slash tests. Then, so be the other source. I think it might be enough for some people, although uh, yeah, there are some some issues with the format itself. We could make it like a like a GitHub release, something like that on EVM one. Yeah, or, but um... but now I remember what what are the issues with like using this is that uh the status format it it hashes the the result, so so how you use it is just you need also hash your result and then you compare, and in case it's different, there's no mm -hmm. way to tell what's wrong. So that's really difficult to to like work with if you are developing kind of thing. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, could, so could maybe we, just could we have, for example, traces accompany the uh, those tests? Would that be reasonable, or that's too big? No, no I think big. then if if that's the problem, I think then reasonable solutions just output this this YAML files and then. Uh, there are expectations in this file, so there's at least some source of information, and traces are possible with other tools to get as well. Um, so yeah, I think something like that. No, I, I, yeah, but I, I meant like the traces that which are kind of reference traces for for the for those test scenarios that are generated with EVM one and. Someone doesn't have to, you know, install or build EVM one in order to obtain those reference traces. But, but yeah, outputting YAML would also be an option. It just needs to be coded in EVM one, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we should get like other clients' teams input on this. What would be the Convenient way of sharing those tests. We can do this in Discord. And if and if they say yes to YAML, then then we could we could just uh, implement this in EVM one.
All right. Um, you mentioned earlier, I mean, if there's nothing else on the testing, um, you mentioned at the beginning that we wanted to have the DevNet and, you know, we need um, Basin for that. Right. Another question on that actually, um, probably to Pavel, is Silkworm still operational or they shut it down? Uh, yes, it is, but it's, I think it's different. Uh, it's a bit different from what we want. So um, I'm not sh sure exactly what the status is, but like it can execute all of the like transactions and all of this, but I, I don't think it's like good, good peer to peer network participant. Uh, I think it has some support, but that's not like something that it's really, really stable in my understanding. I thought it just needed uh, Aragon for the initial sync, but then it does have peer-to-peer. -peer. It has peer-to-peer, it has -peer, but I, I never actually used that. Uh, so because like the, the initial sync is is based on snapshots which are taken from from BitTorrent network, so like it doesn't really get it from anywhere. Uh, so we need to first of all you need to kind of make the snapshots and it cannot do it. So it's I think it's a bit complicated how it works. I think it's a general by of Aragon. Um uh, however, what they have right now is they have a like combination of like Aragon with with C plus plus execution. So uh, I think that that's more like realistic use case. Um, however, I'm still not sure if Aragon can easily be used in a DevNet. If it can, we can try this combination. Okay, that, that would be interesting. It's like it's like merge of the like let's say Aragon network and uh, Silkworm block execution. So that is combination of these two code bases into single like product. Um, would you potentially look into this until the, the next call just to see if it's yeah yeah sure really possible so then we could have um, two clients on the devnet um all right the other brief topic i wanted to discuss is solidity um so i looked up the the old pr and it implemented a it implemented three of the IPs. So the container format, static relative jumps, and function uh, function sections. Um, that was the extent of the implementation. Mm. I think it's probably rather outdated, the, the branch itself. So rebasing would be potentially quite something, um, but then implementing other stuff again is is questionable um i think i can try rebasing it um but should we try to invite daniel for the next call All right, there's some thumbs up. Okay, I will chat to Daniel and see. Um, yeah, see what happens. I don't have any other topics from myself. And uh, since it's, it's a short call, I guess we can call it today, unless somebody else has uh, anything else to bring up. I, I just have a quick question about the EIP updates. Uh, I wonder if you have like agree on the kind of more or less the procedure we are following. Uh, I mostly like there's some confusion I think about the 
how the update are merged uh, in this by this EAP board and stuff. And I think it probably makes sense to just always start with a draft PR. So it's it's only merged when we actually want it to be done. And there's like some number of reviews we actually want to have. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think we don't really follow this very strictly. So I wonder if you have any opinions about it. I'm fine either way. I mean, one way is to, to put a comment that looks good, you know, but not approve it in, in the review and then someone else can review it still before merging. Or we can just draft all the open PRs and and just remember to open them in draft moving forward. I think either way is fine. Hopefully that's this is not the reason why um, we are not doing the reviews. No, I I don't think it's that's related. Yeah, but I agree that some of those uh, PRs could use multiple reviews, but. You know, technically, uh, either where wor either way works. You either um, mention that it looks good, but you're not approving this, and just uh, find some and look for some more uh, reviewers, or or we can move them all to draft. Is there a preference that you have? Mm, yeah, I think in like selecting for these two options, I would just use the draft. <laughs> All right. Because it also depends if you are already an, an author of AIP or not. And like if you are, <laughs> then it will be merged without any reviews. And so I think Fair enough. I'll just, just like draft using them. draft just works in every case and it's like more robust. Okay. After the call, I'll just go for the open PRs and make them draft. But please review them. Yeah, sure. All right, Peter. I gotta wait for the <clears throat> wait for my reviews until you move it to to draft, and I can make a, sure. a proper move. Sure, sure. All right. Anyone else for? Any closing question? All right, then. Uh, I think next week going to be way more busy. Everybody should be back. Um, yes. Yeah, a closing unrelated note. Um, after Dankun, I checked Solidity if it implements some copy, and it does. Um, and apparently, they're going to make um, and it should be out in a release because it was written in a few weeks ago. Um, but they're also making um, Shanghai the default. Uh, Cancun the default, sorry. Um, so yeah, Solidity should have mCopy um, support. So that's some good news. Nice. All right. Have a nice day, everyone. And... Uh, yeah, see you next week on this call. Yep, see you next week. Bye. See you. Bye, Bye all. Thank you. Recording stop.